For decades, the religious right has been almost singularly focused on overturning Roe v. Wade. If the draft ruling remains the final word, you'd think they would proudly proclaim victory. It is, after all, the culmination of years of work to put in place activist Supreme Court justices with a religious agenda. But the normally vocal party has been somewhat muted, and there's a reason for that. The majority of the American public does not agree with the conservative justices on the Supreme Court and the Republicans who confirmed them. But now that the dog has caught the car, it's an open question what comes next and if voters will punish Republicans for taking away women's rights. Join me now, Aaron Haynes, editor-at-large for the 19th and an MSNBC contributor, and Robert P. Jones, CEO and founder of the Public Religion Research Institute and author of White Too Long, The Legacy of White Supremacy in American Christianity. I'm going to start with you on this, Robbie, because, you know, it, this is the dream come true that, you know, those of us who have been following the religious right and the things that they've said since, for a long time know this is what they wanted. Now that they've caught the car, their, mes- their messaging doesn't seem to be as exuberant as one might expect. Why do you suppose that is? Well, I think you've hit the nail on the head. It's really notable that it's nearly two thirds of the public that supports the legality of abortion. Similar numbers uh, oppose overturning Roe v. Wade. Uh, And in fact, even if you look in uh, the religious uh, landscape, you know, you mentioned the religious right. It's really the white evangelical right that we're talking about that is at the core of this. They are actually the only religious group in the country among whom a majority think that abortion should be illegal in all or most cases. That is, every other major religious group in the country um, uh, is in majority support uh, of this right. Uh, Latino Protestants are divided, but white evangelicals stand alone. They're only 14 percent of the population, and they stand alone as the only group uh, that really opposes it. It's it's worth noting that um, the elite is Catholic justice, but uh, the Catholics in the country, uh, six in 10 Catholics in the country support uh, the legality of abortion, despite the, the church's stance. Let, let's just look at some of these um, the PRI numbers that you brought in, um, Robbie. Um, you've got 61 percent overall oppose overturning Roe v. Wade. Only 36 percent support it. Um, by party, it's still a no for most uh, other groups, Democrats and independents. Um, but even 48 percent of Republicans oppose overturning Roe v. Wade. And then when yeah. it comes to, as you mentioned, white evangelical Protestants, it's kind of divided. Um, so 52 percent support overturning Roe v. Wade. So it's divided. So, so the, then to bring you in, Aaron, uh, the question then becomes, what do they say about it? Because I, I've seen a lot of, um, you know, anti-choice activists, uh, you know, sort of pro-birth activists on TV that have been saying, no, it's about compassion. Well, Axios has gotten the Senate Republicans talking points. Their talking points are be compassionate, expose the Democrats for their extreme views, forcefully refute the Democrat lies regarding GOP positions on abortion and women's health care, um, blah, 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 you know, uh, uh, you know, push the idea that Americans support reasonable restrictions. This isn't about reasonable restrictions. This is about banning abortion. And, and they've even got a bill they're working on the Senate. Um, what do you think this winds up doing or what are you hearing that it wind, it's going to wind up doing in some of these races uh, in the midterms? Well, you know, Joy, it's going to be interesting to see what happens even tonight with uh, there's a there's a primary uh, underway, even as we speak in Ohio. Right. Uh, where abortion uh, has certainly uh, been part of the conversation in uh, that primary election there. But listen, I think you, you've got a preview of, of where Democrats may be going uh, headed into the midterms uh, with uh, Vice President Harris remarks at Emily's list. Obviously, uh, one of the most powerful uh, political organizing uh, group in the country uh, for women. And, and what you saw was a very powerful, a very forceful speech from the vice president where she threw down the gauntlet saying women's rights are under attack in America. Uh, and she said in a statement that she put out earlier today that, that you know, it's time for every uh, woman in America to fight for with everything that they have uh, to, to push back against uh, what uh, may be coming if, if, if this draft opinion ends up uh, actually being the actual opinion of the Supreme Court later on This year, uh, you heard a lot of the talking points. I'm just looking here at my notes, uh, you know, reminded and she reminded the audience of the long fight to undo Roe uh, from uh, the Republican Party and, and, you know, warned them that, you know, we're no longer in a hypothetical situation. This is real uh, for people now. And it's going to take really all hands on deck. It it almost seems like a kind of a reframing of the conversation around uh, the midterms headed into November and, and could be. Uh, you know, just kind of the latest uh, chapter in, in the culture of war, uh, but but one that Democrats sound like they may actually have an answer for. Indeed. And just to note that Kansas, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin all have active um, debates going on about abortions. So this is going to hit some swing states as well. Uh, but, but Robbie, I want to get into what else they want. Um, 
because the, the right to privacy that underpins Roe v. Wade also underpins the, under, the Obergefell um, same-sex marriage decision. It underpins the legality of uh, birth control, which even Judge Brett Kavanaugh and you know people like Marsha Blackburn have called abortifacients. They consider birth control to be abortion drugs. Um, it, 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 you know, they've even, there have even been some of them who've spoken out that, you know, Loving versus Virginia, the interracial yeah. marriage do uh, doctrine it should be decided by the states. How much more do you expect them to try for now that they have the court? Well, I, I was struck again. I'm no uh, lawyer either, but I, I was struck by uh, the aggressiveness uh, of, by which uh, this this leak memo went after uh, you know the presumed right of privacy uh, that's been you know six decades um, uh, of jurisprudence establishing uh, this and that it goes straight at it. And if it's not mentioned specifically in the Constitution, the argument is uh, there's no constitutional support for it, right? Um, and so you're right, even. Uh, uh, marriage across racial lines, right? Could be back on, uh, we could be doing it. In many ways, I think of this as um, a kind of time machine, right? It really is an attempt to drag the country back to a 1950s America. And in fact, when we look at the, the correlations between question on exactly that, like if you look at those who oppose the legality of abortion, uh, we, we find that it's two thirds of them believe that American culture and way of life, for example, has changed for the worse since the 1950s. Uh, we find that that same group that opposes abortion uh, it doesn't see the connection, uh, doesn't see systemic reaction, uh, systemic racism or the connection between past discrimination uh, and, and present inequality. So there's a whole range of things, a whole worldview here that really is connected. Uh, this is not just about abortion. Uh, this is about a much broader a set of issues uh, that are have, have that really are about a kind of white Christian right worldview uh, that again is a very minority opinion in a rapidly changing country today. Yeah, yeah and I, I think they've given up on the it, on the idea they can Joy, convince can, people that they're right. They're just using coercion now. I'm sorry, very quickly, Aaron, we're running out of time. But go yeah, for it. Joy, if I can pick up on what Robert is saying. I mean, I think you heard a couple of, to his point. There were a couple of talking points that in Vice President Harris's remarks that speak directly to that. I mean, one, the idea that. You know, when she says, you know, we're not going back, you know, being really forceful mm -hmm. with that, but really just tying uh, this, this potential decision directly to the erosion of democracy, in addition to you know, a woman's right to, to make decisions about her own body. Uh, this is an opportunity yeah. to reframe a conversation around, uh, you, know, the, you know, the women's vote around who gets to be a voter of faith. Again, white evangelicals are not the only faith voters in this country. And, and hearing right. from uh, them about where yeah. they are uh, on this issue, I think, is also going to be part of this conversation going forward. Indeed, indeed. Aaron Haynes, Robbie Jones, thank you very much. And don't go anywhere. Our own, yeah. very own Steve Kornacki is firing up the big board as we speak for the latest on today's important primary in Ohio, as Aaron just mentioned. Our polls have just closed. We'll be right back.